Star New Stand Up, Pay Bap. Come on. Hurry up. Star New Stand Up, Pay Bap. Star New Stand Up. You mustn't fight like that. But he started it, Mr. Ward. No, I didn't. Yes, yes, yes you but did. he's younger than you are. Hello, Tibby, dear. Have you missed me? Yes, of course you have. Come on, Come on. It's nice milk. You like that, don't you? Here you are. Drink it all up. Here's a good chap. Don't drink it up. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get a doctor to you. Yes, I am.
Fair superintendent. Oh, yes, sir, the Asia Star with munitions for the Far East. Yes, sir, she'll make high water, all right. Swing off right down below. Swing her right. You, Ted Broom. That's me. You want it off, mate. Harry Boyd, take over, will you? OK, Ted. Number two holes battened down, and they're almost complete with one and three. That's right, sir. in an ambulance you can get to Pier 47. Transfusion, get him away quickly. Which pier, Sergeant? Number 47, straight ahead. This is the big shot. You better watch your step, young fellow. He's from Scotland Yard. One of theirs a special branch. Commander Robert Brennan. Is he? Sergeant Bailey, yes, sir. Commander's just gone through the gates. Evening, sir. Hello, Hewitt. I haven't seen you for ages. 43, sir. Limpid bombs. That's right. You know Superintendent Farland, I suppose? Of course, sir. Hello, Hewitt. This is Major Elliot, one of our experts from MI5. He's supposed to be helping us, or we're supposed to be helping him. I never know which. <laughs> Could you help me with a suit of overalls, Inspector? I've come on this in a bit of a hurry. We'll fit you up somehow, sir. Thanks. Well, come on, let's see if we can discover how the fireworks started. What was his name? Broom. Ted Broom. I ordered a transfusion on the spot, but I don't think much of his chances. Mm. Was he able to say anything? Not a word. Let me see. You were the foreman in charge, weren't you? That's right. When did you start to load number two hole, Williams? Ten o'clock this morning, sir. Was anyone down there at any time? Apart from your own men? No, sir. No naval personnel? No. What time did you finish? 5.30, sir. Could anyone have got down there after 5.30? Not without going through the engine room, sir. You checked everything below before battening down? Definitely. Then you were the last man out before the explosion? Oh, what's that got to do with it? Anyone could have planted it any time. Who could have planted what? Well, whatever's set the lot off. Well, they all say it's sabotage, don't they? Do they? Isn't that jumping to hasty conclusions? That's what I said to him, sir. Touchy cargo like that, anything can happen. Even spontaneous combustion? Definitely, sir. Thank you, Inspector. That's all, Williams. OK. How about tomorrow, Mr. Gilmore? We shan't be able to use you till we've cleared this mess up a bit, Williams. Report to the office Monday. Right, sir. Go and send Brower in, will you? Right, sir. 
Or Williams. Sir? I see from this that you came to London from Gosport. And when was that? In the last month, sir. I see, thank you. I wasn't working the night the explosion took place down there, you know. Well, that's all right, Williams. How exactly did that shipment come from Woolwich Arsenal? Army lorries in convoy, non-stop. Mm, this didn't take long. Not content with just a detonator, they make sure of the job by using a time bomb of sorts. Yes, I shall have to have another chat with our friend Williams. Mm. Very like the Plymouth job. Keep an eye on Williams, Alec. I shall. All right, John, see what I can find. Sir? Albert Brewer reporting. Duck up first class. How are you, Inspector? Hello, Brewer. Haven't seen you for quite a time. <laughs> How's the missus? Oh, no hard feelings. Haven't touched her since. Good. Now, Brewer, we're trying to find out how this happened. Oh, well, my theory is this, Inspector. The chances are them cases was left out all last night at the Arsenal in a pouring rain. Now, you've seen an haystack when it's been and got wet, haven't you? It gets itself sort of hot inside, doesn't it? Generates its own heat, see? Well, that's what's been happening to them 16th charges. All day long they'll be getting hotter and hotter till... Well, what do you get? Spontaneous combustion. Oh, I never said nothing about that. Look here, let's get back to the old haystack. Now, when an haystack gets wet, the inside starts fermenting like a insinuator, see? It starts fermenting and fermenting, and then really starts fermenting. Scotland Yard? Who you want Yes, I put you through. Hey. Have either of you gentlemen ever realized that the one reliable guide to the economic state of the nation is the content of the British sausage? You're taking a very gloomy view of things this morning, though. You would if you'd eaten one of these. And you can keep that window shut, Alec. I've been going through these reports on the Warsaw meeting John brought from MI5. Both say we can expect another show of military pressure in Europe any time now, but um, one also suggests that to keep us occupied, we're in for some more trouble here. Are they reliable? Both agents have been turning in good stuff up to now. Hmm. Means more strikes, I suppose. Expect those in any case. Could mean bigger and better explosions. Well, it says here it's not only to be something big, but something new. Something new. Come in. <coughs> oh, good morning, Robbie. Good morning, sir. Uh, gentlemen, this is Commander Brennan, who is heading our investigation. Uh, Robbie, you know Grant Mansfield. How do you do? He's here as legal advisor to the Union. Oh. Mr. Phillips, Mr. Matthews, I you represent their union executive. How do you do? Uh, sit down, Robbie, won't you? Oh, please carry on, Mr. Phillips. Well, Sir James, I was saying, we dockers feel we're not getting a fair break. These explosions have been happening on and off for some months now, and each time the newspapers come out with stories suggesting our men are mixed up with them. Look what they're saying about last night's explosion. Now, Mr. Phillips, you're not going to hold us responsible for everything you read in the newspapers. Well, how do you think we feel? We're losing our own mates, and on top of that, we're being held responsible. Not by us, gentlemen. And perhaps you'd care to tell us why you've got your men down there planted amongst us. And also, perhaps you'd care to tell us where the newspapers get their ideas, if they don't get them from you. I assure you, they don't get them from us. Then why don't you tell the press that all these stories about sabotage are untrue? Look, gentlemen, supposing there are men in this country, Englishmen like you and me, who are prepared to kill and be killed, who are prepared to use any means whatever to achieve their political ends. What then? Then we think you should prove it. If I may intervene for a moment, I'm sure you understand the natural anxiety of my friends here. You see, and I'm forced to tell you this, no proof has been produced in support of these wild charges. And in the absence of any authoritative denial, the men are becoming increasingly reluctant to handle these cargoes. You mean they're likely to strike? I fear it may come to that. That's why we're here, Sir James. We don't want that to happen. Well, I certainly sympathize with you. But unfortunately, we're not in a position to make the sort of statement you require at this moment. And shouldn't these gentlemen be talking to the Home Secretary, sir, not us? I am responsible for that, Commander Brennan. I had hoped that between these four walls, the Commissioner could give us an assurance that would make a formal approach unnecessary. However, goodbye, Sir James. Goodbye, Mansfield. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Miller. We haven't got very far. Yes, I'm sorry, too. I think I know you're working quite another field, Brennan. Didn't I read a monograph of yours recently on Greek ceramics? Oh, really? Yes, it's a hobby of mine. Nonsense, you're quite an authority. 
You must come and see a black-figured Etruscan vase I have sometime. Yes, I'd like to very much. Right, Drop in one Good evening. Good morning, Mr. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You can see their point of view, can't you, Robbie? They're getting a pretty rough deal. Well, could you persuade the minister to have a word with the press and explain the situation? I could, yes. Of course, he's bound to ask what we're doing. Seems to think that all we've got to do is to pull in all these tough thumpers and agitators. I told him that the people behind this don't go about with political labels tied on them. They wouldn't be used if they did. Tell me, Robbie, what headway are we making? Anyone? Here he comes. Off you go. I'll follow you up. You pass the instructions to me, didn't you? You must know someone. To... Oh, I wonder if you will. Well, keep me a moment, sir. Come in here, will you? Now, you tell them pronto, I've got to uh, get going. OK? OK. Do you happen to sell luminous paint? Hey? Luminous paint. No. No, sorry, we don't keep it. very foolish of him. I see. Well, I shall have to find out what can be done. Of course we shall try to help him if we can. Now, don't worry any more about it. Hi. Let's have another one. Right. Wants another scotch. He'd be lucky. Sorry, chum. All gone for tonight. Anything else you fancy? Drop a gin or something? No. Just as well, if you ask me. Oh, can't you shut that blasted row? Get him in this boozer. Good night. Good night, Captain.
He's back at number 11. Not drunk exactly, but certainly the worse for wear. Benson, I think this is maybe just the time to ask our friend Williams some more questions. We'll be with you in two minutes. Come on, Alec. Isn't that right? This the place? Over the road, sir. Where's his room? On the first floor landing facing the stairs, sir. Yes? Good evening, madam. We've come to see Mr. Williams. Well, this is a fine time to call, I must say. I don't even know if he's come back yet. Anyway, there's a friend waiting for him. Don't get much more of this. Hello. Benson, get a doctor and ambulance quickly. Alec, where's the missing visitor? Alfred! I've got a phone here, Mrs. No, I haven't. And I'd like to know what you think you're doing. What is it, my dear? There's something going on in this house. This closet window is wide open, Robbie, with a four-foot drop onto a coal shed or something. It's an easy getaway. Now, look here. I don't want any trouble with you, but I'm sending for the police Madam, if you don't... Madam, we are the police. What? Quickly, now, this friend of Williams, when did he arrive? Well, just past nine. He said he was expected, so I let him wait in the room. Wasn't that right? Would you recognize him again if you saw him? Well, I think so. How was he like? Well, he was big, just like my poor husband before his fall. Except he was dark and foreign looking. But gentlemanly, mind you, he had a collar and tie on. I'll just take a look at the body. Body? What body? <gasps> Grant Mansville demands full statement. It was reported that the condition of Edward Percy Broom, age 26, of Netherwood Road, SE, is still highly critical. The casualty list in connection with the docks explosion now amounts to nine killed and 17 injured. Poor old Ted. Certainly brings it home to you when these things start happening to that chap next door. Cold-blooded murder, that's what it is. I'd like to lay my hands on just one of them. Come on there. There we are. How is he, Mum? Now, off you run in the yard and play, and I'll give you a shout when breakfast's ready. And shut the door! Ted Broom died this morning. Told Mary I'd give her a hand with the kids until her mother gets here. It's terrible for her. Anything I can do, Mum? No, I don't think so, thank you, dear. Well, Jimmy, you've only eaten half that kipper. Wasn't it all right, dear? Oh, it's OK, Mum. I just didn't feel like... Well, you can't work me an empty stomach. Now, drink up your tea. There's a good boy. Her mother's got to come all the way from Cornwall. I think she'll be travelling half the night. Well, I think I'd better go and open her, eh? Hope he's not going to upset himself over poor Ted. No, I think it's come as a bit of a shock, Mum. He used to spend quite a lot of time down at Ted's, didn't he? Yes, he did. Good morning. Good morning. You're Mr Ellis? That's right. Oh, perhaps you can help us. I wonder if you know a man called Morgan Williams? Williams? Why? Well, the question is, do you or don't you? Look, I'm not here to answer about who I know or who I Mr. don't... Mr. Ellis, we're police officers. Oh. Sorry, I didn't know. Of course not. You do know him? Yes. He's a customer. Oh, yes. Seen him lately? Yes. Uh, he was in yesterday. Was he? What for? Oh, uh... Oh, he came to pay his radio instalment, four and ninepence. Do you think we could take a look at the payments book? Uh. Yeah. Excuse me. You got a piece of wire handy, Jimmy? Oh. Excuse me, gentlemen. So. Um. 
I, I just can't think where I put it. It should be here somewhere. Oh, don't worry. It isn't really important. Who, who was that gentleman? Oh, my brother. What's he been up to, Mum? Has he got himself mixed up in some sort of a fiddle? Of course not. You ought to be ashamed of yourself for suggesting such a thing. Your own brother, too. Here. I'm going out to see what they want. Mum, this gentleman would like a word with you. They're from the police, Mum. Oh, nothing serious, Mrs. Ellis. Just a routine matter. Oh. Well, come in, please. Well, we'd better not be keeping you from your work, Mr. Ellis. You've been more than helpful. Thank you very much. All right, Ellen. Thanks. The fact is, Mrs. Ellis, we're trying to find out something about one of your customers, uh, Mr. Williams. Your son tells us he was in the shop yesterday. Oh, uh, Williams? Uh, I North understand North you're just back from the sea. Thank what you. run are you on? North Baltic. Rigo, Rostock and Memel. Mm, behind the curtain, eh? Uh, That's right. Yeah, the last trip we took were machine tools and precision gauges. It doesn't make sense to me. Just as bad as when we sold scrap iron to Germany and the Japs before the last lot. Which is the musical one? Oh, that's Jimmy. He was always fond of a good tune, but I never thought he'd turn out so musical. Well, that's a very special record. Oh, yes. It belongs to the musical society. Jimmy looks after their gramophones for them, and he's always round there in his spare time. That's the boy's father. He went down in the Athenia. Well, the two boys must be quite a consolation, Mrs. Ellis. Oh, it's a different story now. They're both working. But I won't say it hasn't been a bit of a struggle. The pension wasn't much, you know, and growing boys have big appetites. And they're not easy on their clothes, either. But it's been worth it. They're both good boys. That's George when he was in the Navy. He's exactly like his father, isn't he? And that's Jimmy in the RAF. He was a wireless instructor. He's always been interested in wireless. By the way, you... Uh, you haven't told us yet why you're interested in this fellow, Williams. Oh, well, haven't we? Morning, Jimmy. Have a look at this for me, will you, dear? It's gone on strike again. Put me right behind for the whole day, it has. What's happened this time, Mrs. Bowers? Well, I was up for the weather forecast, as usual, and as I goes in the bathroom, I says to Mr. Bowers, give me a shout when that kettle's boiling, I says. All right, he says. So, I finished out in the bathroom, and as I come out, I said, isn't that kettle boiling yet? No, he says it isn't even singing. Well, I says it should be by now. Well, it isn't, he says. So, I goes over to it, I puts my hand on it, and what do you think? It isn't even warm. Did he create one thing about the old gas? You do know where you are every morning. All right, Mrs. Bowers. Oh, thanks very much, dear. I'll call back for it in about an hour. Oh. Oh, thanks very much. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Look here, Jimmy, you're gonna get yourself into trouble if you go on holding things back. Don't know what you're talking about. If Williams paid the instalment on his radio yesterday, why wouldn't you let him see the payments book? I could see it under the counter from where I was standing. The book wasn't important to him, they said so. Mm, don't you be so sure. Everything's important when it's a case of murder. A case of murder? Hmm, didn't they tell you? Williams was found murdered last night. And they're looking for the man who did it. That's him. He hadn't got a moustache, mind you. But them eyes and nose is the dead living spit. Are you quite sure, Mrs. Skinner? Well, yes. Almost. If it isn't, it's his double. Thank you so much. I'll take this, if I may. Right, sir. What's the story on him? Four, five, seven, eight, double one. Shall I be able to go home now? They promised to take me back in a motor. So they shall, my dear. The Rolls Royce is out at the moment, but I dare say you'll be able to put up with the old Daimler, eh? Hmm. Quite a long story. He's been called a few names in his time, hasn't he? He has. Thank you. Well, according to Mrs. Skinner, it's an old friend of ours, Michael Stringer. Real name Sokolov. Elias Dupont, Elias Lever, Elias Francini. He was deported in 47, wasn't he? Yes, well, they must have shipped him back with some of that tin crab. Shall I put out in all stations, Robbie? Look, the order for that shipment was put out only seven days before the explosion. It was published in the docks only 
48 hours before the loading. Now, what does that add up to? Well, I'd say pretty fast work on somebody's part. Exactly. They'd need more than 48 hours to set up a job like that. Whoever planned it had the full seven days. It was the Ministry of Supply put out the order. We must go through that ministry with a tooth comb, John. Get a report on anyone who came within smelling distance of that movement order. Right. Now, what else have we got? There's Prince Charming. Ah, oh, yes. Put out your call to old stations, Alec. Scout round his old haunts. Whatever he's been known to eat, drink, work or sleep. Check up in every bar he's ever leaned on, every room he's ever slept in. Find out about his friends, his enemies, his women. But if you go down to the man himself, don't pull him in. He may lead us somewhere. Is that the lock? Yes. Oh, no. Now there's the trio for flute, oboe and harpsichord. Are you fond of music, John? Why? You were looking for someone to move the piano. <laughs> you know how it is. I shall have to ask you to help me there. Don't worry about that. We'll soon find you a seconder. We're always glad to welcome a new member. Just sign there, please. We're still quite young, you know. <laughs> the society, I mean. But honestly, we're already in the forefront of the battle for the really new composers. Sort of musical ginger group, eh? <laughs> How clever of you. Yes, I suppose we are. <laughs> well, come along. I'll find you a seconder. Oh, there's Mr. Ward. He'll do it for us. Mr. Ward, will you be an angel and second a new member for us? Mr. Elliot, Mr. Ward. Good evening. Yes, of course I will. How very kind of you. Mrs. Uh, Finch Harvey, we have a new member with us this evening. Huh? May I introduce Mr. Elliot, Mrs. Finch Harvey? He's just back from abroad. I know you'll make him feel at home. Of course. <laughs> How do you do? How do you do? He's back from abroad, eh? We'll have the new recordings after the discussion, Jimmy. Did I give you the playing order? Yes, everything's ready. Here we are, Miss Laurie. Thanks terribly much, Mr. Ward. Not at all. <laughs> Good evening, Jimmy. Nothing very exciting this evening, is there? I shan't be coming here again. You fond of music? Well, well of course you are, or else you wouldn't be here. Just the usual, you know, <laughs> Bach, Beethoven, Brahms. Oh, great Scott, they cut very little ice here. As a matter of fact, I call them the three Bs. <laughs> Rather good, isn't it? <laughs> <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, if you'll just take your seats, please. Yeah, yes, I'm simply dying to hear this, Mr. Rackham, aren't you? But dying. Thanks a lot, everybody. Now, tonight, as you all know, we're going to hear that very controversial trio of Miskowski's, his first and last, incidentally. I shan't say anything about it now. I shall be leading our usual discussion afterwards. <coughs> Don't expect to find it easy right away. It's certainly intellectual. But beneath the cerebral, so to speak, there's loads of lyrical and lots of jolly good tunes. I remember him all right, and his girl. They haven't been in here for years. Let's have them cheese rolls up, Elfie, will you? Well, this girl, who was she? I don't know. He called her Annie. I don't know nothing more about her. How about rose petal for the 2.30, Elfie? No, not a chance. If I did know, I wouldn't tell you, so you needn't ask me. All right, Sam. 
We just thought he might have come after his old job again. Well, he hasn't. He was kicked out of this country three years ago by your mob. You know that as well as I do. Okay. In that case, I'll uh, leave you to get on with the revolution, eh? Ta-da. Fascist. My dear fellow, whatever may have happened, the secrets of my consulting room are still as inviolate as the confessional. Look, Cushman, we're not interested in your secrets. Have you or have you not seen Stringer? That's all. Seen him? Of course I've seen him. Didn't they bring him in here three and a half years ago with a knife wound under the heart? Pierced the pleural lung and pericardium. I pulled him through. Ask him. Ask him. All right, Cushman. Struck off. There's justice for you. For one trifling experiment. But he'll come back. They all do. And if he does, my dear fellow, where shall I tell him to get in touch with you? Where? I said, where? So you knew him, did you? Of course I knew him. They had the top flat across the road. Mind you, I'm not one for washing dirty linen, but I knew there wasn't Mary, because she had letters come addressed in another name, see? What name was that? Well, now you got me. Wait a minute. Brown. Anna Brown, that was it. Dark, foreign-looking party she was. And she didn't speak with no accent, mind you. Anna Brown. We want to know where she lives and where she works. Commander Brennan, please. Commander Brennan, we've located the woman Anna Brown, sir. She's working at an art gallery in the West End. Excuse me, I think my bill is under your bag. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yes, thank you. Sir? Sorry, I can't wait any longer. Well, excuse me. I don't know who you think you're pushing. I'm sorry, I'm in a hurry. Well, so am I. Man. Let's have that ticket. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I didn't snap it. You might step it Come on, the last one you took. Hey, what is this? Look, you don't want to be pulled in for obstruction, do you? Give me that ticket. Oh. Here, take the bleeding lock. That's it. I should have stuck to the barrels. Yes, it's purely a routine checkup, you understand, but I may want another word with you when I've been through your personnel file, all right? Well, you know where to find us. I do. Good afternoon. Memo came through from the ADD this morning. Well, I can't move without something in life. Mr. Ward! Oh, Mr. Ward! Just the man I wanted to see. I didn't get your money for the tea trolley, did I? Oh, dear, oh, dear. So sorry. I took an early lunch today. Thanks ever so, Mr. Ward.
Quite a decent type, aren't you? Well, I know you get along with him very well, don't you? Seems harmless enough. But then a good cover always does. She spent an hour there, then went back to Bayswater. She's got a couple of rooms just off the Queen's Road. We lost the man she spoke to at lunch. Benson, where's that snap? But by a stroke of luck, we got a picture of him. Mean anything? Nothing in the files. How about the boy Ellis? He's hardly moved from the shop since we went there. We must have put the wind up him. Mm. Someone has. Robbie. Well? We've got something. Look, there's a chap at the Ministry of Supply in one of the departments that moved those munitions from Woolwich to the docks. Yeah? The same chap is also a member of the Elgin Modern Musical Society. What's his name? Ward. Percy Ward. Hey, wait a minute. Robbie, you've been holding out on me. Where'd you get this? Oh, don't worry about him. Tell us about this fellow Ward. But this is Ward. This is the man. Oh. Then I'm happy to tell you that you and Mr. Ward had lunch today with our Miss Brown. Yes, John, I think we have got something. Mum, what are they doing, Mum? Do be quiet. But what are they doing, Mum? Oh, somebody's going to get his picture took. I'd like to have some of my constituents in the picture. Any objection? No, sir. Good. Now, who's going to volunteer to be photographed with me? I'll have a go. <laughs> oh, don't break the camera, Ethel. The old man will surprise when he sees it. <laughs> Come along. We want more than one. Seeing he stood for this new People's Progress Party, he'd done very well to get in, you know. I must say, he's been a real friend to the people down here. So could I be on his money. What I mean is, you can go and see him if you want to. Last one we have, we never set eyes on him. Not from the day we put him in until they shoved him up in the air, Sir Lord. Thanks, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Where are they going to now, Mum? Going home to have their tea, love. Same as what we are. Come on, Alfie. Oh, here he is now. Hello, Jimmy. What are you Can doing? you spare a minute? I've got a message for you. All right. Come through, will you? He's back, Mum. She gone? No, they're talking out in the workshop. But I could have sworn he didn't want to see her. She told me she'd come from that music society. But he's given that up. He hasn't been there for weeks. George, I'm worried. That boy's in trouble. I don't know what it is, but he's had something on his mind for a long time now. So what am I to tell him, Jimmy? That you won't be coming to the Music Society anymore? No. Well, uh, tell them I want to be left alone for a bit. Things out. I can't go for the moment. But why, Jimmy? That's what they're going to ask. Why? Because I never bargained for what happened that night. A pal of mine who lived next door was killed. Aren't you being a bit of a fool, Jimmy? You know as well as I do that we can't allow our feelings to influence our actions. I could feel sorry for your friend if I let myself. Except that I know that what killed him might have killed hundreds of those who are fighting with us. You can say that, Anna. You haven't heard his kids asking for him. If I had, I should have stopped my ears. But what are you reproaching yourself for? You're fighting to give those kids a better world, a world that isn't rotten with disease and the fear of war. Your friend died a fine death if you only knew it. And what about Williams? What had he done? He wanted to get away and we couldn't smuggle him out of the country with the police watching every step he took. You know that, Jimmy. You mean it served his turn? He didn't matter anymore? That's just the point. He did matter. He might have destroyed us all. Don't forget where he got the fuses from. But I never knew what they were for when I made them. Not until Williams told me afterwards. It doesn't matter, Jimmy. You didn't have to. All you have to understand is the importance of the movement and the unimportance of those who serve it, and that means us. Then I must have time. There are so many things I've got to get straight. I must have time, I tell you. If you stop working now, Jimmy, 
It might make them afraid. Afraid? They might think you'd changed, Jimmy. That you might talk. But I won't. I swear I won't. I still think the same. I mean about how the world should be. It's all this bloodshed. They must leave me alone just for a bit. They must leave me alone. Jimmy, Mrs. Bowers is... Mrs. Bowers is in the shop. There's something wrong with her kettle again. All right, Jimmy. I'll explain how you feel. I'm sure they'll understand, so don't worry. Jimmy, I don't know what you've done with this kettle last time you had it, but I says to Mr. Bowers this morning, I says, be a dear and switch it on, I says. All right, he says. So, he switches it on, and he gives out such a yell. Before you can say Jack Robinson, he's flat on his back with a blue light running up and down his arm. Oh, I've never had such a shock in all my life, and neither has Mr. Bowers. All right, Mrs. Bowers, I'll do it as soon as I can. Oh, well, be grateful, dear. Your mum keeping all right, George. Last mm. time I saw her, I says to myself, well, you're one of the cheerful ones, I says. Mum's OK, thanks. Well, ta-ta, I can see you both busy. Goodbye, Mrs. Bowers. I think you'd better tell me, hadn't you, Jimmy? What's the matter with you? Every time the shop door goes, you nearly jump out of your skin. You're scared of something, aren't you? Why have you been scared before? Remember that time Snotty Turner and his gang were gonna beat you up behind the gas works? I'm on your side, you know. Look here, Jimmy, as far as I'm concerned, you can do exactly what you like. It's Mum I'm thinking about. She's worried stiff about you. She knows you're in trouble. Now, what is it? Come on now, Jimmy, what is it? You keep out of this. You mind your own business. Look here, Jimmy. You're going to tell me. Keep out of it, I tell you. Whether you like it or not. George. George. George, I'm sorry. You're right. I am in a jam. I do want you to help me. It's just that I, I don't know how to tell you. In an establishment of this kind, it's really most inconvenient. The telephone was perfectly all right last night. This morning, it's quite dead. Ah, Miss Brown. And I shall be taking you in number one study today. You may go straight up if you like. Thank you, Mr. Wells. I'm afraid I shall have to leave you to get on with it. I have a lesson at uh, 4.30. The telephone's in my study there. Don't you worry, sir. We'll soon find the fault. Really good. Poor old dad, eh? Just bring in that old box of tricks, Annie, will you? Sure. of Empire, eh? No, no. Fix that outside cable now, Andy, will you? OK. That's the idea. The gas has the following properties. Yes? Any lines or extensions? What? Any telephones in here, sir? No, 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 not in here. Sorry, sir. Now, pay attention.
Yes? Mind if I just check your telephone, sir? No. Carry on. Thanks very much. Have you got the dialing tone all right? Murder, isn't it? Hello, hello. Can you hear me, Mother? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, one, two, three, four. Hello, can you hear me? There's a good line up here. I think we found a forward, all right. Well done, Collins. Watch your step now. Trust me. He's on to something. Manner. Do you think he's dangerous? Yes, I do. He's lost his nerve completely. He should never have been given the job in the first place. He's quite sort of work. At the moment, I don't think he's likely to talk because he's too frightened. But whether we can take that risk? Well, I say we can't. Uh, of course. Oh, yeah. Please, let us remember our democratic discipline. Can I say something? Carry on. Look, what's the picture? Three weeks ago, I was working on my own. I only knew two others in the whole organization. That goes for everyone else. Now, because of this new plan, we've all been brought together. I know everyone, and everyone knows me. One false move from any one of us, and we're all behind bars, if nothing worse. He's quite right. We can't afford to take the risk. The boy Ellis is a criminal traitor, and that's how we should treat him. Would you call him a criminal traitor? I used to thought of petty bourgeois deviation. But why bring that boy down? I can tell you that the party has never been satisfied that Ellis had the correct political approach to our problem. And for that reason, he has never even been considered in connection with the present plan. He knows nothing and nobody, except Anna and one other. However, the final decision will not be taken by us. It will be taken by someone else. Nothing else. The top of the house is completely shut off. Right. Off we go. Do you see what I see? Why, oh, it's that MP fellow, Grant Mansfield. You keen on politics, Alec? Hmm? Because of what I'm thinking is right, there's going to be a constituency looking for a new member very shortly. I haven't been able to sleep, not for weeks, thinking about it. I know I've been a fool. I've known that ever since the night Ted Broom got it. What had you got to do with Ted Broom? I made the fuses for him. Out there in the workshop. That's what they got me working on in the end. I made two or three. Jimmy, how long have you been working for these people? How did it all start? Oh, it was just before I came out of the RAF. There was a chap in our barrack room. Got friendly with him. Used to go to meetings. I know it sounds daft, but what they told you was something you felt you could believe in. Then one day, when I was on orderly duty, they asked me to get some bit of information. It wasn't important. Didn't really want it, they told me afterwards. Just wanted to test me. But you got it? Yes. Don't you see, Mum? They said those who wanted a world without wars would have to fight for it. That it couldn't come just by voting. Don't you see, Mum? No, I don't see, Jimmy. 
I don't understand how you could think like that after all we've tried to do for you. The way you've been brought up. That's just it, Mum. The way I've been brought up has meant nothing but struggle for you. To keep us on at school meant you had to go out and work your fingers to the bone. Every pair of boots we had meant you went without something. Do you think I minded that? I'd go through it all gladly again if I thought you'd grow up straight. The sort of son your dad would be proud of. Well, he didn't declare war on anybody. And what happened to him? What about Ted Broom and all those other poor devils who were killed under the docks? Who had they declared war on? I don't know. Do you think I don't know? What can we do, George? That's what I've been trying to work out, Mum. But who do we know that can help us? I don't want any help. I've made up my mind now. It's not just you, Jimmy. It's all of us, the whole family. We'd have to get a lawyer. That's the first thing. What would it cost, George? You could raise something on the pension towards it. No. I've made up my mind. I'm going to our MP, this chap Mansfield. I'm going to tell him everything. Ask him what I should do. Follow me, please. Tell me, what made you come to me with this story? Well, oh, sir, I, I wanted to get things straight. I thought you'd know the best thing for me to do. I suppose you realize this is a matter for the police? Oh, yes, sir. But I didn't want to get mixed up with them before I'd had some advice. I see. Who else have you discussed this with? No one, sir. What? Oh, but surely you've confided in somebody. Your, your parents, for example. Well, there's... It's only my mother, sir, and, well, I, I wouldn't want to worry her with all this. Well, look, I've got to get back to the chamber. Look, Ellis, I'm glad you've come to me, and I'm going to do the best I can to help you. Thank you, sir. Go back now and wait until you hear from me. Talk to no one about this. I'll see that you're looked after. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Excuse me. Could you put me on the road to Gravesend, please? Gravesend? Yes, I've got a map here, but I can't quite Let follow it. Holland here. Yes? Where? Lambeth Bridge? Yes? Yes, what's the number? Right. That boy Ellis has been to see Mansfield at the House of Commons. Yeah? Spent half an hour with him, and when he left, he was picked up by a car on Lambeth Bridge, and we lost him. Find out who owns that car, will you? Yes, sir. Alec, there's something afoot. Something important brought that boy out. I'd like to know what it is. <laughs> Change the number plates and take the car from London quickly. You bet. Come on. If you wanted to talk, why you did not come and talk to us, huh? You don't think he'd be staying the night with some friends? Oh, no. He'd never do that without letting me know. And you've no idea where he was going when he left here this afternoon? No. Funny thing, I was glancing through some naval records the other day. You never told me your husband won the DSM, Mrs. Ellis. He must have been a very fine man. <laughs> Mum. 
Mrs. Ellis, you do know where Jimmy was going this afternoon, don't you? No, 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 I don't. Mum, it's no use. We've got to get this thing cleared up. Yes, we do. No, no, no. Where? He was going to the House of Commons to see our MP. And after that? Straight back here. Are you sure of that? That's what he told us. What was he going to see your MP about? He wanted some advice. He'd been he trapped. To know He'd been trapped into working against the country. But he never meant to. I know he never meant to. Jimmy is bad. He'd gone to make a clean breast of everything. To Grant Mansfield? Yes. Oh, but didn't he know? Oh, no, of course he didn't. Now, listen very carefully. From this moment, I'm going to put a guard on this house. I won't hide from you the fact that both of you, as well as Jimmy, may be in considerable danger. If we're to get him back safely, you must do exactly as I tell you. You mustn't leave this house under any circumstances. And if any inquiries are made by, say, Mr. Mansfield, you know nothing, absolutely nothing. Why don't we get rid of this kid, huh? We shall when the present job's done. Until then, he's safe enough where he is. He would be safer dead. My dear Stringer, in this country, we haven't yet the incomparable advantage of a sympathetic police force. To dispose of a body, that is, without the cooperation of an undertaker, usually leads to most embarrassing inquiries. You're too much the man of action. What of it? I take my orders from the movement. If there is any trouble in Spain or France or Mexico, I go if the party orders it, and I worry about the risk afterwards. You know, you in this country are a joke. You sit around spinning words and talk of nothing but the risk. My dear chap, how can I begin to explain the difference between what you can do in Mexico and Spain and what you can do in a country like this? The movement varies its methods according to the political and historical development of the country concerned. Ah, the trouble with you is you're just a bourgeois intellectual. Why you don't wake up, huh? in with those reports we had from MI5. If Mansfield's the man I think he is, then we're onto something big. He's not fishing for tiddlers. That man's after one thing and one thing only, power. And we haven't much time. What do you want to do, Robbie? I want to go through Mansfield's house when he's not there. And to be safe, I want a search warrant. Well, I think he might have told me he was going away. I'd have took my kettle to Blatchford's. He hasn't been called up again, has he? I was only saying to Mr. Bowers this morning, all these war scares, I said, what do we pay the politicians for, I says. But, my dear fellow, as I told the Director of Public Prosecutions, I'm paid to protect the individual from the state just as much as I am the state from the individual. I can't possibly send you off to get a search warrant on that amount of evidence. Supposing you found nothing. Might cost the government thousands and me my job. But if the state is to have adequate protection... Minister. Then satisfactory evidence must be produced. No, 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 I'm very sorry, Commissioner.
further action in Europe is to take place, Plan X-23 has got to be a success. I'm now going to tell it to you in full. We intend to destroy the eight great power producing centers in this country. Three of them are in London, of which Battersea here is our own particular concern. The other five are in Glasgow, Liverpool, Manchester, Leeds and Birmingham. They will be dealt with simultaneously by other groups. You can see what will happen. Heavy industry will be crippled. Mills stopped. Armament and shipbuilding impossible. In a word, this government will be unable to resist our demand for a people's peace. The date is May the 7th, the time 1.30 hours. All preparations must be completed one week from now. You will then disperse and return to London on May the 6th, that is, the day before the operation. Carry on. Now listen to this very really carefully. This is in Brown Town, the power station. How long will you need to set all the charges? About an hour. And the night shift have got to be kept quiet while you do it. Right. Mm -hmm. How many operators work the night shift? About 15 in the station itself. But once we've moved in, we'll look. There are four doors leading into the station. Mm -hmm. What's that? Total mobilization? We have a saying in Ireland that he who sees the dawn catches the herring. We have a saying in China that he who goes to bed early to save candlelight begets twins. Tomorrow's the 4th of May, and it'll be two weeks since Jim disappeared. Surely there must be some clue. How about that car, for instance? It was found 150 miles from London. There was no driver, no Jimmy, no fingerprints, nothing. The whole area was combed and recombed, still nothing. Mr. Ellis, I think I know how you feel, but every station, every policeman in the country has a description of your brother and is on the lookout for him. No, ma'am. George, David, have some food. Anything doing? Not a thing. The War House and the Air Ministry have agreed to double the guards on all existing defence installations. The Ministry of Works are considering it. They think we're scaremongers. I don't mind admitting, sir, that I'm most uneasy. The fact is, Robbie, this is supposed to be peacetime. We simply haven't got the resources to guard everything. How about a raid on that tutorial college, sir? No, no, no. There's been no activity there for days, and frankly, I don't like it, sir. No, neither do I, Robbie. Chances are we should only pull in Stringer and that full of wells and put the others on the alert. Well, I dare say the truth is we've slipped up somewhere. They know we're onto them and they're lying low. Well, they've completed their plans and are ready to act. How about our friend Mansfield? <laughs> An odious example of selfless service to the community. Read it out, John. Fourth, lecturing working men's college, Birmingham. Subject, law, order and politics. Fifth, parliament all day, opens new boys club in the evening. This morning, May 6th, parliament again, and tonight guest of honor at an embassy reception for the society for the promotion of a people's peace and culture. I'll give you one guess which embassy it is, sir.
陈月，陈月。Jock picked it up, too. What do you make of it? Over. Ah, uh, it'll just be a leg pull. Some joker trying to be funny. Over. Ah, oh, well, I hope you're right. Do you think, uh, will the wife be safe enough, eh? Over. Now bother your head, Sandy. David Deal made away hard. But all the same, we'd best support it, just to be on the safe side. Over. OK. But I'll leave that to you. Oh. Hello, Aberdeen. Hello, Aberdeen.
That's right, London. The message states that the attack is time for 0130 hours. Aye, we're reporting this immediately to Glasgow, Birmingham, Manchester, Liverpool and Leeds. Quickly, Robbie, the balloon's gone up. They're off the power stations tonight. What? Aberdeen just reported. Shortwave message interception. Get me Major Elliot, quickly. Power stations, of course, that's it. Communications? Communications. Commander Brennan speaking. I want to call for every available reserve. Issue small arms to a special detail. Hello, All John. patrol Turn cars will be directed quickly. to the following the areas at once. Inspector? They've got inside, sir. There's been some firing. Are they in strength? Well, sir, they seem to be everywhere. Holland, I want the Home Secretary quicker than lightning. Right, sir. Inspector, send out a call for all the reserves you can lay your hands on and get this place cordoned off. Elliot, you get inside and see what you can do. Sir? Field. What is the meaning of this? Don't you remember? You invited me along to see this Etruscan vase of yours. I remember asking you at some time convenient. Oh, it was some time, was it? I thought you said any time. What beauty. What was it Voltaire said? Perfection walks slowly, hand in hand with time. To think that such beauty was a commonplace in homes nearly 3,000 years ago. Commander Brennan. Are you seriously expecting me to believe that you came here at two in the morning to discuss the comparative merits of the utility household utensils of ancient Greece with those of today? No. As a matter of fact, I did want to have a little chat with you on another matter. Could we sit down?
history? As in nature, Brennan, we see that survival depends upon strength. You mean force? Mm, if you like. All the culture of Athens didn't prevent the armies of Alexander from... from putting out the lights, did it? Surely history, and recent history, also shows us Mansfield that wherever people have known the light, they don't tolerate the darkness for very long. Dear Brennan, to advocate the power of government should be vested in the people is no crime. Yeah, certainly not, but tell me, what would happen to you in that event? Ah, yes, I see what you're driving at. The people must have leaders, Brennan. Naturally, I should expect to lead them. Most interesting. Overthrow the elected government, uh, substitute, uh, shall we say, the people's will, that's yourself and your associates, and call it democracy. Well, that's certainly one road to power. And it is power you want, isn't it, Mansfield? Personal power. Shall we drop this little game, Brennan? What have you come here for? What do you want? Evidence. And you, Mansfield, you're under arrest. <laughs> Will 
Carry on back, Johnson. I'm going to walk. This is the BBC Home Service. Good morning, everybody. Here is the 7 o'clock news. During the night, there were short interruptions to the electricity supply in various parts of the country. The British Electricity Authority apologised to consumers for any inconvenience they may have suffered and add that the causes of the interruptions are being investigated. The visiting Australian test team arrived by air at Heathrow last night. In a short speech of welcome, the MCC president said, twisting the lion's tail is quite a popular present-day pastime. Of all those who attempt it, he added amidst laughter, visiting cricketers are the only people whose efforts we are prepared to view with anything approaching sympathy.